Hey everybody, and welcome back to a new video. Are your photos always coming out too light or too dark? Do you have a problem of underexposed photos against a bright sky or blown out highlights against a dark background? In this video, I'm gonna explain why this happens and what's the solution in your camera to solve this so that you don't have over and underexposure problems again. It's called exposure compensation. Unless you shoot exclusively in full manual, you absolutely need to know how to use this. You'll want to stay till the end where I give you a pro trick with exposure compensation to give you what I call insurance against blown highlights. My name is Simon Dantremont and I'm a professional nature and wildlife photographer living in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for wildlife and nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. First off, a warning about scammers who are using my photo, pretending to be me, and offering you prizes in the comments below. So let's start off with some knowledge on what's going on in your camera when you take a photo. So what I tell you later makes sense. When you look at a scene with your camera, your light meter measures the amount of reflected light in the scene that's going into your camera. This gets shown on the light meter, which looks like this. Zero is meant to show the right exposure. This is all done in black and white, so don't worry about colors right now. Now if you shoot in manual, the camera doesn't do anything now but await you pressing the shutter button. But if you shoot in any of the automatic modes like automatic, program, shutter or aperture priority, or manual with auto ISO, the camera will try to get your exposure right by adjusting either the shutter speed, aperture or ISO, depending on what mode you're in, when you take a photo. For example, if you shoot in manual with auto ISO, you set the shutter speed and the aperture and the camera picks the ISO. When you point your camera around, the shutter speed and the aperture don't change, but the ISO floats up and down as the scene changes and is selected by the camera when you hit the shutter button. The exposure or brightness your camera tries to achieve in your photo was agreed to by manufacturers as medium gray or 18% gray. That is a gray that reflects 18% of light. So if your exposure is too bright, your camera will try to darken the exposure to hit 18% gray. If your photo is about to come out too dark, your camera will brighten it by tweaking the settings again to hit 18% gray. I can show you how that works here by photographing a white page and a black page in aperture priority where the camera picks the right shutter speed to get the right exposure. Notice that both photos come out as gray as the camera has adjusted the exposures to hit 18% gray. While this is a great feature, usually making your life as a photographer much easier, the camera doesn't always make the right decisions. Some dark photos should be dark. Some light photos should be light, for example. If you shoot into a bright sky or snow, the camera will think the photo is too bright and darken it, sometimes underexposing your subject badly. A bird on a treetop with a bright sky is a classic example. I think every bird photographer in the world has taken this photo here in their career. Here's another example. I don't want this short-eared owl in the snow scene to be 18% gray. The snow is supposed to be white. Also, if you shoot into a dark environment, the camera will lighten the exposure, but anything light in the scene will be overexposed and will blow out your highlights. So a few scenarios to use exposure compensation are to help keep dark images dark, light images light, and also when your subject and the scene are of different brightnesses. Your camera isn't always skilled at managing these scenarios. So what do we do here? In fact, your camera has a solution for this built right into the controls, exposure compensation. Exposure compensation is a means for you to tweak the exposure, brighter or darker, to get it right in case the camera's automatic exposure attempt doesn't nail it the first time. You can find it on your camera by looking for this icon with a plus or minus symbol. On many cameras, there's a button like this, some have a dial, and on most cameras, it can be reached via the LCD screen. On my camera, I have it programmed to this dial for easy access while shooting. The amount of exposure that you're adding or subtracting is shown on the light meter. When you make it brighter, the meter goes right, one, two, three stops. When you make it darker, the meter goes left. So how do you know when to use it and by how much? If you shoot with a DSLR, the most common method is to take a sample photo, check it on the back LCD, and adjust the exposure as needed. Add if it's too dark, reduce exposure if it's too bright. Now learning how to use a histogram is a great tool for this. I have a video on it, which you can see right here. With a mirrorless camera and its electronic viewfinder, you have an added advantage. 
While a DSLR shows you optically what the sensor will see, a mirrorless camera will show you live what your final exposure will be, exposure adjustments by the camera included, so you can adjust the exposure while looking in your viewfinder. Having your exposure compensation on a dial that you can adjust while looking in the viewfinder is very handy here. That's what I do while photographing wildlife. With experience, you can sometimes predict that exposure compensation will be needed. For example, I know that while shooting a bird on a treetop against a bright sky, we'll automatically need more exposure. I'll sometimes add a full stop or more without even thinking. I have my exposure compensation set to move in one third stop increments, so three clicks to the right for one stop. I also know that very dark colored subjects need more exposure so they don't come out too dark. But against dark backgrounds, I know my camera will brighten the exposure. If there are highlights in the scene, I want to avoid being overexposed. Like in this scene, I'll darken the exposure by moving the dial left. So three clicks left for one stop. Same with a super bright subject in a dark scene like this great egret. We don't want it too bright, so we can reduce the exposure. Let's look at a quick example with my little owl buddy. He's very bright, but against a dark background. The camera thinks the scene is awfully dark and will try to brighten the exposure, but that overexposes a photo of my owl. So what do I do? I use the exposure compensation dial and move it a few clicks to the left to darken the exposure. So now when I take a photo, it's properly exposed for my owl, which is my subject and my priority for getting the right exposure in this case. With time and practice, you can learn to do this more instinctively. My brain now does the following. Black crow, add four clicks. Snowy owl, reduce three clicks. Shooting a dark flying bird against a white sky, add five clicks. Don't forget though, at the beginning of every shoot, Check your exposure compensation dial. Some people, not me though, forget it and set it way right or way left and then when they start shooting the next day, find that they've wasted a great opportunity for the very first photo of the day with photos badly over or underexposed. Remember to reset your exposure compensation to zero at the start of every shoot. And now for the bonus tip. For most styles of photography and digital camera models, it's easier to recover a photo that was shot a bit too dark than a bit too light. That means shadows can be recovered if underexposed, but highlights may be clipped and lost forever if overexposed. As such, we're better off slightly underexposing. On days when the light is getting bright outside and clipping the whites is a real risk, you can get some insurance against this by intentionally underexposing your photo by just a bit, like one third to two thirds of a stop. Set this as your walking around setting and shoot your photos intentionally a wee bit dark and raise the exposure in processing. This technique is especially helpful with crop sensors and other smaller sensors in bright sunlight as it's easier to blow out the whites due to having less dynamic range, that is the, the ability to recover the darkest and brightest parts of the image. I use this technique to protect the bright highlights on my bird pics on bright days when I'm using my crop sensor camera. If you want to become a master at using exposure compensation, you want to learn more about metering modes so you can control what parts of the image the camera is getting its light measurements from. Check out my video on this topic right here. If this video is deserving, give it a like and YouTube will show it to even more people, helping others grow in their photography journey. I hope you can use this knowledge to go out there and take your own amazing photos. I know you can do it.